Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. What did you get on here today with a fragrance video? Um, Mr. Kong's mom, Melanie, over at Mr. Kong's mom and I wanted to do a fragrance video together. So we wrote some questions and we're gonna answer those and we're gonna talk some fragrance today. Um, before I get started, let me just say welcome. If you are over here from Melanie's channel, we're so glad you stopped over to visit. And if you are a regular here and you don't know Melanie from Mr. Kong's mom, you need to go over and visit her. She's a fragrance expert. House fragrances like candles and things, but also perfumes like we're going to be talking about today, skincare, um, she's just great. If you don't know her, go on over and visit Melanie. And before we get started, I will tell y'all I'm not a fragrance expert. I'm a collector at this point. I'm a, it's a very fun hobby for me. I just have a lot of fun with it. So anyway, I'm going to jump right into this. Okay, number one, how many perfumes are in your collection? 35. And I will tell you, that has grown a lot recently. I don't know what made me all of a sudden get so obsessed with fragrance, but I cannot get enough of it. So I have 35 right now, I have a bunch on the way, <laughs> and I have a bunch of samples that I'm trying. So right now, I have 35. Number two, what is my favorite fragrance ever? Okay, this is hard because I have a lot of new ones that I am really excited about. I have three new Jean-Paul Gaultiers. I love um, some classics I have, the Michael Kors. I love. I love YSL Paris. I love Amarige. But the one that I would say is my all-time favorite, and it just makes me happy when I wear it. I would have to say it's the Jo Malone Orange Blossom. When I was smelling these to, you know, what's my favorite of all time? When I smell this, it literally makes me smile. It smells like a field of, to me, honeysuckle and oranges. It's just clear and bright and floral and natural. It doesn't smell synthetic to me. For some reason, when I smell this, it reminds me of walking through a farmer's market when I was a little girl. It smells very natural. And floral. And hold on, I'm gonna read you the notes in it. It says Clementine flower sparkles over a heart of orange blossom and water lily with warm undertones of orris and balsamic vetiver. So, anyway, this is just fresh and lovely, and um, I love it. I, I do think that that may be my all time favorite. It is beautiful. Okay, number three, the oldest fragrance in my collection. Okay. okay the two oldest fragrances in my collection are really not that old because. If I'm not wearing something, I'll pretty much toss it with no hesitation. I toss stuff. So I have had the Erin Tuberose for probably about two years, and then I got the Dior Poison again about two years ago for Christmas. But both of these are beautiful, and I will tell you the notes. The Erin the Erin Tuberose is beautiful, and this has notes of... The top notes in this are Orange Blossom and Neroli. The middle notes are Indian Tuberose and Jasmine, and the base notes are Cedar and Cashmere Wood. It's sweet with a spicy, smooth note underneath it. And then the Poison is such a classic, and I still love this as much as I did in the 90s. And this is Coriander, Spice, Tuberose, and Opapamax, which I don't know what that is, but it is so delicious, I could eat my arm off. Oh, that is so beautiful. It's a very sweet with a spice underneath it. Okay, number four. What is the newest fragrance in your collection? Okay, I made these notes two days ago, and at that time, it was the Jean-Paul Classique, Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique. And this is lovely and very sweet, very sweet. Since then, I have gotten another one in. Hold on. But then last night, this came in. The Dolce & Gabbana Garden. And this is beautiful. This is what I'm wearing today. And I'm going to look up the notes for you. This is so nice. And again, sweet. Hold on. We'll look up the notes together. The top note is Mandarin, Magnolia Accord, and Neroli. The middle notes are fringe of penny. I bet that's the different note that I'm smelling in this. It makes it different from anything else I have. And I love it. This has fringe of penny, flower accord, coconut essence, and ylang ylang. The base is vanilla absolute, almond silk accord, and sandalwood. 
that's why I could eat it because it's got vanilla and almond in it and it is beautiful it is it's like a flower garden I could just eat okay next my most sentimental okay if you've been with me you know I love throwback fragrances and I have reordered a ton and I've reordered a ton of them, but I would have to say that my most sentimental, and I don't know that y'all have heard me mention this much at all, is the Elizabeth Arden Red Door. This is definitely not my favorite fragrance that I have, but it is probably the most sentimental because it's not one I would have picked, but I was selling Elizabeth Arden um, 25 years ago. So I was wearing Red Door and I wore it until I fell in love with it. It, it just reminds me of when I lived back home. And before I went to work one day, I went and I took a nap in my old bedroom at my mom's house. And she said when I left, she could smell it on the pillow and she loved it. And that made me love it. So I would say that the red door is probably my most sentimental because like I said earlier, I don't keep stuff. If I don't like it or if I'm not using it, I'll just toss it. But the red door, this just reminds me of that time when my husband and I were living back home and I was seeing my parents all the time. And when my mom smelled this on a pillow and I said, are you not allergic to it? Because she's allergic to a lot. And she said, no, I don't seem to be. And I really love it because it reminds me of you. And I thought that was so sweet. So that's what this reminds me of. Okay, number six, fragrance you could live without but just can't seem to get rid of. Okay, I'm going to say the Jem Alone grapefruit because I can't throw it away because I love this bottle and it was pretty expensive. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it was pretty expensive. And I love a pungent citrus and that's what this is. It is a strong citrus and I would wear it. Nobody likes this that I'm around. I sprayed it on and had my niece smell it and she was like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> like are you lying she didn't like it and then I asked my husband and he was like no I don't like that nobody likes this that I'm around but I can't make myself throw it away because I like it and I love the bottle so I just I think it's unisex and I tried to give it to my husband for him to wear I was like maybe you like it on you and so I put it up here on his chest and he walked in the bathroom the other day and he was like yeah there's that perfume that you tried to give me I love this, but nobody I'm around likes it, but I still can't throw it away. Number seven, favorite types of scent notes for sure. I like a floral or a fruity top note. And then for middle notes, apparently I love frangipani. Anything sweet, orange, um, I like blood orange, mandarin, pineapple, or florals. I like um, tuberose. And then underneath it, I like it to have a warmth or a spiciness. Usually vanilla, almond, sandalwood, vetiver. I love warm sweet gourmands. So anything sweet, but it's gotta have something underneath it. And I don't like straight florals. So not many, I, I mostly don't like straight florals. Okay, next, my least favorite type of scent notes. I'm not sure, I'm not that good yet. I can give you some examples of things that I don't like. I don't care for the Mont Gar Garlon. It has something about it. It's kind of a hard edge to it that I don't like. I don't like the Mont Paris. I don't like most Chanel fragrances. They just kind of smell, um, most of them smell like, um, like they have a harder edge to them or something. I don't know what it is. So somebody out there help me with that. Number nine, what do you do with fragrance samples? It depends. Right now, I'm ordering them by the crate. I'm ordering fragrance samples from the Perfumed Court, Lucky Scent, and Scent Split. If someone just sends me a sample, I look at it, and if I don't recognize it, I really toss it. I just look at that as trash. I really toss samples, unless I'm paying a premium for them. <laughs> but when they're sent for free, I don't even really notice them much. Number 10, my favorite packaging right now is one of two. It's either the Jo Malone I just love the simplicity of it. I love the straight lines. I love the um, the tag on it. I just think it's beautiful and old fashioned, like um, Laura Laura Ashley type. I could see this in an old 
Southern house back in the past. I just think it's beautiful. Or the Tom Fords. I love the Tom Fords too. I just love these clean lines. I love how it feels in my hand. I love how heavy and substantial it is. I will tell you, I had a basket in my bathroom with all of my fragrances in it recently. About, at that time, probably 20. And it was kind of overflowing. And when my daughter walked in there, she picked this one out of all of them. It was just kind of sitting in the middle of all of them. And she was like, what is that? She noticed this one. It's packaging that just, it commands attention. So I love the Tom Ford and I love the Jo Malone. I love those clean lines. Number 11, my least favorite packaging. I definitely have one that is my least favorite and then some that are kind of runners up. My husband just brought me this from a trip he was on and I like the fragrance of it. I can't stand the packaging and that's, I mean, that does not look like from a fragrance house like Givenchy. This is Givenchy. It's glass, but it looks like it ought to be plastic. And then it's got this lid that is plastic and it just kind of doesn't, it's definitely not magnetic. It doesn't even fit on there good. And then the back, these notches, what are those for? Maybe just to help me hold it. It makes me not even like the fragrance that much, but I, I like it okay. It's a tea fragrance. It's nice and soft, a little bit spicy, kind of mossy. It's nice, but I don't, I don't like that packaging. I can't stand it. I'm also not a huge fan of the Jean-Paul Gaultier, these ladies' bodies. I kind of love it, hate it. It's like when I go in a house with 80s wallpaper. I kind of love it, and I kind of want to tear it down and paint over it. So that's kind of the response I have to this. Like, do I love you or hate you? I kind of love it. But I kind of think that is so tacky. I would not want to set this out. So I, I keep that in my closet. I also am not crazy about the, what is this, alien. I'm not crazy about that packaging either. It looks, it looks like an alien. It's just kind of harsh to me. You know, the purple, I don't know. I just don't like that. Number 12, fragrance you want to try but haven't pulled the trigger on. <sighs> if I, really nothing. If there is something out there that I want, I want to try it first. If it's expensive, anything over a couple of hundred dollars, it gives me pause because I'm like, is there something else I could do with that money? Is there a cheaper way to get it? Like a tester site or, you know, I have so many now, maybe I should just get big five mil samples of it. So some that I will hesitate on, the Perfumes to Marley. I feel like I'm going to want some of those after I try the testers. I will hesitate on those. Um, predicting that I'm going to love those and have to kind of maybe once a month and on holidays and anniversaries, special occasions. So I don't really have an answer for that yet, but those are some that I feel like I will be hesitating on. Number 13, do you mix fragrances? If so, what's your favorite combination? I do that with one and it is this <laughs> with the, what I consider terrible packaging, the Givenchy Angers ou Demon. I mix this because it's a little weak on me by itself. I, I like to give it a little oomph. It's nice though. I mix this with the, a sample of the Cartier de Mest. Mest de Cartier. I mix this with the Mest de Cartier that one of you girls told me about. And that has a quite a bit of a nice spice in it to go with this that needs more of a spice. They are lovely together. The Angers ou de Ma with the Mest de Cartier is lovely. Okay, number 14, first perfume you remember wearing. Um, the first ones I can remember wearing are Heaven Scent and, and um, Sand and Sable, followed shortly by Ralph Lauren Lauren, the fragrance in that bottle. And I think half of what I loved about that, I really did not like the Lauren fragrance that much. I loved the bottle. And when I look back, it was the clean lines. It had the clean lines of Tom Ford in that little square bottle. And it was that color too. I loved the packaging on that. And it just smelled like money to me. You know, it's Ralph Lauren. I'm from a small town in West Texas. Yes, I will have some Ralph Lauren. And I loved the packaging. I loved the idea of it, The just that whole world. But what I really loved was Heaven Scent and Sand and Sable. 
And heaven sent, when I look at the notes, I bet I would still love them because they are the notes that I still love. The heaven sent, the notes in that, they still sell it for 16 bucks. You can still get it. Apple Blossom, Bergamot, Jasmine, Rose, and Lily of the Valley. That still sounds lovely. It sounds like it might need maybe a warmth for me to like it, but I loved it. And then the Sand and Sable, I can remember where I found this. I remember what it smelled like. I was on a ski trip with my high school, and I was with my friend Karen in a little gift shop in Durango, Colorado, and I smelled the Sand and Sable and had to have it, and I bet I would still love it. It's jasmine, gardenia, peach, and various green notes. And I bet I would still love this. I loved it then, and I could still get it for $22.74 <laughs> on um, fragrance.net. Number 15, a perfume I dislike that everyone else loves. I'm going to um, say again the Mon Guerlain and the Mon Paris. I don't know if everybody loves the Mon Paris, but the Mon Guerlain is very popular. And every time I hear about it, I'm like, why didn't I love it? The notes sound perfect for me. And I tried it over and over and just did not like it. I hate that I didn't like those. I want to like them. And number 16, Recent Fragrance Regret. Okay, now this is not because I don't love these, because I love every one of them. The Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal, love it. The Scandal by Night, which is the intense version. And the Classique, and I also have the Labelle in here somewhere. I love every one of these, but I could wear them interchangeably. These are all intensely sweet, which I love. I could drink it. And they have a perfect amount of warmth or spiciness underneath them, and I love them all. But they're interchangeable to me. I could wear all of these in any day. I could pick up any one of these. I did not need them all. So I'm going to say that I should have picked one or two of these. I really regret buying all of those, but I will wear them. Okay, next, what are or who are some of your favorite fragrance channels? I have been binge watching fragrance channels, and some of my favorites that I found are Demi Rawlings. She is a lovely girl out of Australia, and she is making me try a lot of niche fragrances. I think our tastes are going to be real similar. She likes really sweet and rich with a woody undertone, I think. I'm loving her channel. I have ordered a ton of the samples she has suggested. Then I love Pauline Char, Paulina Char. Then another channel, her name is Sarah, hold on, Sarah Mays. I love her channel. And then in our own community, Melissa Villanueva has some of the best fragrance videos. All right, and that is our fragrance tag. I am going to tag a couple of people down below, but if I don't tag you, please feel free to do this and let me know if you do it because I would love to come and watch your video. Y'all go over and visit Melanie at Mr. Kong's Mom. I know I'm going to, and that's all I have for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Leave comments and questions down below, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a good day. Bye.